Okay, I'm hearing some words that are kind of irritating to me, so I thought I'd make a video about it, which are natural disasters, miracles. We're kind of looking for a miracle. What is a miracle? And, you know, these natural disasters, earthquakes, it's like out of our control. You know, how many problems do we experience that's out of your control? And one way I seen this, uh, Oprah's retiring and, uh, you know, most, uh, a lot of the things that she, people are celebrating her for is how much she's a teacher. She educated and inspired a lot of people to get an education. And what that does is it makes you receive information so you can perceive your world in a certain way. So you might go to school and learn accounting. How you perceive numbers is going to create a, a career for yourself. If you receive knowledge on this is how you can make the books look like you've got a lot of money and this is how you can make those same figures look like you got nothing. That's what education will do for you is, is it will change your perception so that you can create whatever the hell you want to create if you got enough information about it. So Oprah, one of the uh, shows that I seen we're celebrating is um, there was a guy that was a CEO of a big company on Wall Street. So Oprah inspired a lot of people to rip off your houses and, you know, create a lot of bad bank loans, you know, because they were busy being their best life. Their best life meant I need to make the most money, have the best life, have the biggest house. Look at Oprah's houses. Does one person need more than one house? No, that's excess. So Oprah was being her best self by being friggin' selfish, by earning all of that money, by inspiring people to do a lot of wrong things. Did she do that intentionally? No. But that's where intention can be really bad. If you think you are right about something and you inspire other people to do what you think is the right thing to do, then you are responsible for the hell that they create by your inspirations. So it's kind of a hard pill for Oprah to swallow once she gets this big awareness that things aren't as natural, you know, as we think they are. The whole globe is totally connected. There is no void. Every molecule is attached to another molecule. An air molecule is attached to a water molecule. So, you know, your air is totally attached to the water. You know, it's like, you know, layers of pudding. Some are heavier, some are lighter, but they are all still connected. And um, when we see all of these um, earth catastrophes they're very much man-made and and there is no dispute you you cannot dispute that every earthquake every um, hurricane uh, rainstorm is man-made you cut the rainforest down you change the weather patterns so there's something within this matrix these molecules that are attached together there's us humans are moving those molecules around to create events create experiences so you can't escape that it's a matter of what is the causes of everything and that's our awareness this is the big wake up this is the 2012 we have to go through a stage of truth where we're going to find out oh things aren't exactly what we thought they were um so you're going to be real pissed off you're going to be real angry and there is an information field it's like you are google you know, I can get, I, I can ask you any question and get, you can access the, the world wide web, you know, without using the internet at all. You, your brain has access to all of the information in the universe. You want to be busy looking in time, you know, in history, where if we knew how to do everything right, don't you think that we would have done everything right and it would have unfolded? Something along the way was wrong. So you can go back in history and 
try and figure out where the hell were the answers back then and you do what they did then we're going to repeat the same mistakes they made you know they'll think that they had the answer oops they were wrong we'll think that they had the answer and we'll go oops you know so that's that's kind of what what humanity is doing right now is going back and trying to find out everything that's wrong and then we're going to do everything that's wrong and think we're going to save ourselves and that's that's just not going to happen you got to understand there's patterns within patterns if you want to escape out of the pattern you can't be doing the same thing over and over again. That's called insanity, you know, repeating the same action over and over again and just magically something different is going to pop out. So um, we need to tap into that World Wide Web and know that we're going to get truth. There's two layers of information. There's a layer of everything that's wrong and a layer of everything that's right. If you are in a pissed off, angry, frustrated, you know, got to fight them mood state of being, you're going to access all of the wrong information. And then you're going to, you know, experience these not so natural experiences. And you're going to react based on the information field of everything that's wrong. <laughs> So it's like, is the end of the world going to come? Yeah, if we don't get a grip on, if shit happens, that's the time you're supposed to take a step back and really calm down and find your place of peace and then ask the information field good questions. It's like Google. You can, you know, search for a house, you know, who's selling a house, but if you don't actually use the words house for sale, you know, you won't get out. If you just put the word houses, you'll get a billion things come up. It'll be so confusing, you won't know what it is. So you have to ask well-defined, searchable questions. Good questions will give you good answers. Good state of being will give you good answers. So that's uh, um, what the future potential is all about. This awareness that we're going to get is... Um, Everything you think is right is actually wrong. And how do you prove it? I don't know if this is quite going to give the explanation, but here. This is a blue piece of material. Now, you have a comprehension. Somebody on this planet told you that what you're looking at, that color, is blue. But it's not necessarily blue. It's just what we're all going to agree on, that when it looks this color, we're going to call this color blue. But I can actually make this green if I can get everybody to agree that this color is actually green. So that's how everything in reality is created, is somebody makes a suggestion. If the majority agrees on it, then it's true. So if everybody's thinking the world's going to end, and everybody's in agreement, we will see the end of man. But that's not going to happen because life finds a way and somebody on the planet is going to want to survive and not believe that crap. So basically, the world is not as round as you think it is. Um, you know, when you're looking at these cam trails, what's going on? They're covering up the sky. Why are they covering up the sky? Because you can't see the stars. Why is it they don't want you to see the stars? You know, there's a cause to everything, and most of everything that's going on is just one big massive game being played out by some very, very sick people. And <clears throat> I suspect that they're very, very depressed because most people that uh, are making the rules that are saying this is blue, you know, and they, they create schools. They're people that can afford schools, you know, that have teachers that say, all students, I want you to see this blue. <clears throat> and seeing this blue is, is, you know, programming you to kill yourself and kill the planet because if you're dead, that's where peace is going to be found. So, um, what we need to do is start teaching people a different comprehension so that um, they'll know the results of their actions. Um, I know that's a really, really hard thing to say, but if you want to see your awareness, it's like you got to look outside of yourself to see yourself. Look at what you're doing from, uh, you know, above the room and watch yourself. You know, what are you doing with your day? What are you saying to yourself all the time? Um, what types of people do you attract in your life? Every experience that you attract is actually coming from you. And I really want you to think about this. I've been saying this since I was like five. 
um, that the strongest form of energy is actually thought. And, and really do some thinking about it, that when you go into, you know, get a brain scan, an EEG, what do they do? They check to see if you're alive. If you're alive, that means that every time you have a thought, there's an energy wave that they measure. And, you know, they're, they're, that's an EEG machine, I believe, checks to see how much energy is coming out of your brain. What do you think is creating the energy? Your thoughts. So every single time you have a thought, that's energy that can be transformed into anything. So do we have free idea, uh, energy? Free energy is about as easy to access as your thoughts. <laughs> you know, the distance between experiencing the energy is from the time you have the thought to the time you comprehend what that thought is. Um, how can I say it? it? As soon as you have a thought, reality is creating it every day. Every single second that you have a thought, the universe is um, like a mirror. It will reflect what your thoughts, what your beliefs. It's all about beliefs. And if you believe this is blue, that's what your beliefs are. If you believe a Bible is going to teach you about God, that's your belief. It's not necessarily true. Somebody told you. <clears throat> it's just as insane as you burn a Bible, you get rid of all Bibles. Does God exist? You know, that's what a lot of arguments are, is that it's the word of God. How would I know who God is if I didn't have a book? Well, if you close the, down the book, who do you think you're accessing? Who, you know, that is God. That is consciousness in this information field. You can learn about God. I learned about God in this way. You know, God's loving. You got to be loving. <laughs> you know, Satan is evil. If you're evil, fearful, you know, lacking love in any way, shape, or form, and ask yourself, you know, how do I solve this problem? Well, evil will tell you how to solve that problem. You know, it'll throw you a lot of money and a lot of bribes and you'll think you're doing everything good, but that's how evil works. It always feels good in the short term, but it's actually doing harm to you and it's doing harm to everybody else because you've accessed the wrong information. But does your Bible tell you that? No. The Bible was man-made, just like every other natural disaster. It's all about control. Human beings have control issues. They want to control other people or they can't control their own lives and need to be controlled by, by other people. So, you know, the biggest wake up is find what your thoughts are because your thoughts matter. What you believe to be true matters. If you believe the planet's going to come to an end, then you will experience every day the course of the end uh, for you, but it won't necessarily be the end for everybody. I don't plan on making it the end for me. Um, cancer, AIDS, they're not natural experiences. Something in our atmosphere, molecules matching up with other molecules are creating illnesses that you're susceptible to. But power of energy, you know, like you can see uh, uh, people that just spontaneous healing, you know, it's a miracle. It ain't a miracle. They change their thoughts. And their thoughts have a way of changing every other molecule that's inside the body. And it has a, has a way of regenerating itself. That's a little secret that nobody wants you to know. That the body can actually heal. But you have to have the right thoughts. You have to have the right belief systems. And you can't, you know, if, if you believe in something, you don't doubt it. It's because you believe in it. You know, if you doubt something, then that means you don't believe in it you believe in what it is you doubt <laughs> you know so if you want to believe that you aren't creating your reality then you will experience every day that it's out of your control that's other people are doing things to you the illuminati or the police or everybody else is doing things to you and then you'll feel completely out of control and it's like how's that going to work for you but if you take the position that you are the one in control in every experience that crosses your path you are actually acting like a magnet to that experience that you're supposed to reflect on and go okay what was that all about what was I wanting what was and if you're fearful you'll never ever understand why you are trying to attract the things you're attracting now as far as you know the globe making this massive shift 
I know what's going on in my brain and I know I want everything changed. So guess what? Everything's changing. Everything's collapsing. It's a good thing. Although it'll feel real bad in order for things to change in the system to collapse, I needed to lose a few things. A lot of people are going to lose a few things. But that's like cleaning out the old and opening up for new because it's a new beginning ahead. But you got to believe it. Peace out.